Hi everyone, welcome to Volcano Tuesdays. My name is Gina and I am an educator with the Mount St. Helens Institute. Last week we learned about the history of past eruptions at Mount St. Helens. Today we are going to focus on one eruption in particular, the eruption that occurred on May 18, 1980, just 40 years ago. To learn about this, we're gonna bring in a very special guest and I'm gonna flip over our screen to show you an interview that I've recorded with Alyssa Adams from Washington State Parks. Let's welcome in Alyssa. Let me introduce our fabulous guest speaker for today, Alyssa Adams. Alyssa joins us from Castle Rock, Washington, which is near Mount St. Helens, and she's right on an old lake called Silver Lake that was created by a past eruption in Mount St. Helens. Alyssa is an interpretive specialist with the Washington State Parks and Recreation Commission. She works at the Mount St. Helens Visitor Center and several other state parks within the Upper Cowlitz Recreation Area in southwestern Washington. Her job includes presenting ranger programs, answering questions, giving trip planning advice, and working alongside other park staff to keep the park clean and cared for. She loves being outdoors and sharing her passion for the natural world with visitors who pass through. I'm proud and excited to have Alyssa on the show today with us. And we're gonna begin with Alyssa um, chatting with us a little bit about her career and how she came into this work. So first of all, a big hello and welcome to you, Alyssa. Thanks for joining. Hi there, thank you so much for having me. I have a few questions for you about your career path, if you're okay with answering some questions for us. Of course. The first question is, how did you become interested in pursuing this career? That's a great question. Thank you. Um, I'm one of those strange individuals that realized what they wanted to do at a very young age in life. So when I was five and six years old, I was outside playing in the yard, getting dirty, eating things I probably shouldn't have been eating, and somehow survived all of that and realized that that passion fueled what I wanted to do with my life someday, and that was to be an outdoor educator. Um, for a while, I took the path of zookeeping. I uh, had a lot of fun teaching folks coming into the zoos, uh, what was so significant about the animals, uh, those ambassadors for their species. And then I realized my, my true love was the connectivity between me and the visitors. So I shifted real quick, uh, began working with Washington State Parks back in 2013 during our centennial, and I've been doing it ever since. So I realized early on um, I loved being outside and I wanted to combine that personal interest with a job, and that's what I've been doing ever since. Wow, that is so exciting to hear about. Would you recommend, if you were gonna speak with someone that wanted to do what you do, what would you recommend to them? Yeah, um, that, that's a great question. We get that a lot here actually at the Visitor Center when I represent the agency as a frontline interpreter in uniform, you know, the the tan and green and the flat hat, we get asked that a lot because it's kind of one of those dream jobs and I feel honored to have one of those. Uh, the, the first thing I would say is volunteering at a very young age. For people that know they love being outside, maybe they enjoy um, talking to visitors or sharing stories, um, the first step is to volunteer and see if it's truly something you're interested in doing. Um, when you realize it is, continue that passion. So uh, volunteering at a young age gets you experience to build your resume, um, gets you involved in some really fun community projects, networks you with organizations that share common interests with you. Um, and once you get your, your foot in the door, uh, careers open up for you. So realizing what you like early on doesn't have to happen for everybody, but when you realize it is something you want to do, get in there, get right in the middle of the action, and there's volunteer projects near and far that are looking for helpers, and you could be one of those. So for folks who want to do what I do, um, when I was about 14 years old, I started volunteering at Northwest Trek Wildlife Park. I was there for six years and I loved it. It's one of the best times of my life. And I wouldn't be where I am today without that part of, uh, of my time. Um, and then beyond volunteering, making sure that maybe you get a chance to job shadow somebody at some point to see if that's truly what you like doing. Visit the parks that you're interested in. Make sure you spend time outside fueling uh, what your love is. Um, and then pretty soon you can connect the pieces. Wow, that is a lot of great advice. Ooh. 
Uh, can you speak to your favorite thing about your job or a favorite memory that you have from working where you're working presently? Yeah, um, I have a lot of wonderful memories here at Mount St. Helens and they're all driven by the people I get to meet. Uh, every day standing at that front desk, welcoming people into the visitor center, helping them to plan their trips, answering fun questions like what animals they saw that day, what the name of this plant is. Uh, my visitors make my job really meaningful and fun. Uh, but one day stands out in my mind. Um, I don't know if you remember a couple of years ago, we had some really severe wildfires, unfortunately, where we lost a lot of forest near the Columbia Gorge area. And I was outside um, on, a, on a very busy weekend with a full audience, 60 or more people in the crowd. And I was giving my 1980 eruption talk, which I give time and time again. And right at the part where I talked about the ash plume rising 15 miles up to the sky, ash started falling down from the sky onto me and all my visitors. And they thought I was a magician. They were like, how are you doing this? And I was like, you know what, let's go inside. Because the reality was, you know, we had a fire going on miles away from us, but it was such a large incident that the ash was traveling just like the 1980 eruption. So I remember that day vividly because Visitors were shocked, like, how would I manage to do that? This is the coolest program they've ever been to. And I was so concerned for visitor safety. I was like, let's get out of here. So, you know, crazy moments like that stick with me. Um, but beyond things like that that are out of my control, um, my best memories are just the abundant, wonderful, creative questions I get from children. They are hilarious. Uh, I've been asked if I'm related to Bigfoot. Um, you know, I've been asked, you know, are there unicorns at Mount St. Helens? All these ridiculous questions. So that's always really fun. Wow. I do remember those fires that happened a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. That's pretty incredible. It's nice to experience natural disasters with other people and be able to like reflect on what that means for people together. Wow. Very much so. We had people in the audience that day who actually witnessed the eruption and remember it. And it was a really special way to bring back those memories. And it was almost like the story circle that began. Wow. Well, I want to just end with a final question, asking you about the skills that are important to your job. Like what things are useful to help you do what you do so well? Yeah, um, I would say first and foremost, uh, as an interpreter, every interpreter comes with a different set of skills and every interpreter has different passions and different topics or themes that they're really interested in. But, but something we universally share, I probably would say is creativity, um, passion, interest in the subject matter we teach, uh, and interest in connecting with the public, uh, customer service skills, but it goes beyond that. It goes beyond answering those questions. It, it reaches a special level of like, want to preserve the great outdoors or the historical site you're teaching about and instill that sense of passion in the future generations. So I think connectivity, um, passion, flexibility, and creativity are very important skills to have. Wow. Well, Alyssa, it's such a pleasure to speak with you on Zoom. I just want to thank you again for sharing your office space and giving us a little insight as to what it means to work as you do as an interpreter for Washington State Parks. So thank you so much. And if anyone has any questions about Mount St. Helens or the eruption, remember that you can submit your questions to us on our Volcano Tuesday page, and we can even send them to folks like Alyssa. We at the Mount St. Helens Institute are excited you were able to tune in for this episode of Volcano Tuesdays. We work to inspire curiosity about Mount St. Helens through field trips, outdoor school, and online programming. Consider donating to us to continue these, this program and others to support our work throughout the year. A huge thank you to all of the partners and supporters that make Volcano Tuesdays possible. That's the U.S. Forest Service, the U.S. Geological Survey, the Cowlitz Indian Tribe, Discover Your Northwest, and our many hundreds of volunteers and program participants, including you. You make our programs happen and you make them awesome. Remember to submit your feedback about what you're curious about volcanoes to help us help inform what we do in this program. Thanks again for tuning in and we'll see you next week.